The claim is that smokers have a mean cotinine level greater than the level of 2.84 nanograms per milliliter found for non-smokers. Cotinine is used as a biomarker for exposure to nicotine. The sample size is N equals 881 and the test statistic is T equals 58.344. We're going to use technology to find the p-value. Based on the result, what is the final conclusion? And use a significance level of 0.01. Okay, first, let's, I, let's take a look at the claim. So we're going to highlight or underline the claim. And the claim is that workers have a mean cotinine level greater than the level of 2.84 nanograms per milliliter for non-smokers. Okay, so we know what that's going to represent, which is the mean here. Now, we want to identify the following. So what is the following? Well, in the problem, we know that the claim represents the population mean. And so that population mean is going to equal 2.84. Okay, we also know that the sample size is equal to 881. And we also have the test statistic, which is T, which is equal to 58.344. Okay, so we want to make sure that we can test the requirements. So with the study design used, we can treat the sample as a simple random sample. And the second requirement is that the population is normally distributed or that n is greater than 30. Well, the sample size is n, which is equal to 8, 881. So the second requirement is satisfied and there is no need to investigate the normality of the data. Therefore, both requirements are satisfied. Now let's take a look at the claim and the opposite of the claim. Okay, the claim says that the mean cotinine level is going to be greater than 2.84. So we would say that the claim is that the mean is greater than 2.84. And therefore, the opposite of the claim would be that the mean is less than or equal to 2.84. Okay, and so because of that, we can now identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. So the null is always going to contain the equal sign, and then we have the alternative. Well, the equals is in the opposite of the claim, but we know that the null is always going to have equals, so we know that mu, or the population mean, is going to equal 2.84, and therefore, the claim is now going to be with the alternative hypothesis. So therefore, the population mean is going to be greater than 2.84. Now let's go ahead and answer our question over here. So the population mean is going to equal 2.84. And then in the null, in the alternative hypothesis, we're going to say that it's greater than 2.84. Let's check our answer, and there's our result. Okay, and then we want to determine what is the test statistic. Before we do that, let's just make sure that we can go over the rest of the information in this problem. Okay, we know that we want to use the alternative hypothesis to determine whether it is a left, right, or two-tailed distribution. Well, the alternative sees that we have a greater than, which is pointing to the right. So therefore, this is a right tail test. Okay, and now what is the significance level mean? What is alpha? Well, we're testing it at the significance level of 0 0.01. So alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Okay, and then what is the test statistic? Well, we don't need to use the formula for this problem because they give you the test statistic, which is 58.344. So we have 58.344. But they want us to round it to two decimal places. So we have 58.34 as our test statistic. So let's go ahead and put that in here, 
Check our answer, there's our result. Now we want to be able to find the p-value. So in order to find a p-value, we have to draw the curve. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is our bell curve. The one thing that we didn't need to know is that we have our mean. And so where we know it's a right tail test and that the test statistic t is equal to 58.34. So we want to find that p-value that represents the area in this right tail. So we want to find the p-value and that is when we want to find the probability of when t is greater than or equal to 58.34. And so we're going to use StatCrunch to determine that. But before we do that, we also need to determine what is the degrees of freedom. Well, we know the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, and we know that the sample size is 881. So we would say 881 minus 1 gives us a degrees of freedom of 880. So now let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch to determine the p-value. Okay, so since we are using the t-test statistic, we're going to go to stat calculators and then go to the t-calculator. We're going to put in our degrees of freedom, which we found to be 880. We want to make sure that the inequality is pointing to the right. And then we're going to put in our p-value of 58.34. And then we get 0 as our p-value. So we get 0. 0, 0, 0. Okay, so now that we found our p-value, let's go ahead and put our answer in here. We'll just put in 0, and there's our answer. Okay, now we need to determine what is our conclusion. So what we want to do now is compare the p-value to the significance level. So we know the p-value we found to be 0, 0.000. We know that our significance level here is 0 0.01. So what can we say about the p-value? Well, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we have to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than the significance level, then we fail to reject. Well, this p-value is less than a significance level, and so therefore we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now in order to figure out the entire conclusion, we need to come back and take a look at the claim. Well, the claim contains e, uh, the uh, greater than symbol, which is the inequality. It does not include the equal sign or the equality. So when we come down here to, to figure out which conclusion, well, we can eliminate the one that includes the equality. So we're going to include the la this. We'll get rid of those two at the end. And we know that it does not include equality, and we determined that it rejects the null hypothesis, so therefore it's going to be this first one. So we say that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So based on the p-value, there is sufficient evidence at the significance level of 0.01 to support the claim that smokers have a mean cotinine level greater than the level of 2.84 nanograms per milliliters found for non-smokers. Check our results, and there is our answer.